Hey guys, how are you doing today? Today we're going to go over 10 interesting facts about Darth Maul. Now for me, Darth Maul was a really interesting character. He was one of my favorites, if not my favorite when I was 9 years old when The Phantom Menace came out. Let's start with fact number one. From childhood, Darth Maul was trained to kill Jedi. Anakin Skywalker almost never became a Jedi because the Council considered him to be too old to begin his training. The Jedi recruited Force sensitives from a very young age as they wanted the members of their order to be as free of emotional attachment and life's baggage as possible, so they could concentrate on the Force and avoid the temptations of the dark side. The Sith, on the other hand, embraced any and all intense emotions, from anger and hate to love and passion. Life experience was a useful tool for them to twist and turn their recruits towards the dark side. However, that doesn't mean that only adults could become Sith. In fact, Maul was just a child when Palpatine began training him. When he was the appropriate age to join the Jedi Order, the Zabrak became a Sith instead. As Maul was so young, he didn't yet have the bitterness that someone who has experienced life's hardship might have, which meant that Maul's training, in addition to turning him into a weapon with phenomenal acrobatic and double-bladed lightsaber skills, was also designed to be as aggressively brutal and harsh as possible, to build his hate in conjunction with his skill set and force powers. He was such a savage that he preferred to kill you up close and personal to watch the light leave your eyes rather than just use the force like a typical Sith would. Number two, he was manipulated into hating the Jedi. Darth Sidious's training, along with turning Maul into a perfect assassin, also taught the Zabrak to hate the Jedi for years and years before he actually ever met a member of their order. His hate ran deep, but was ultimately engineered, as it didn't come from an organic or traumatic event in Maul's past, until, of course, he lost Obi-Wan. This was Palpatine's doing, his hate for the Jedi. When Maul was still a young boy, the Dark Lord of the Sith brought his young apprentice to the planet Malachor to witness the relics and remains of a devastating battle that had been fought there between the Jedi and the Sith centuries earlier. Sidious then forced the young Maul to inhale the ashes of some of the Sith who had fallen in that battle. The ash caused hallucinations that brought Maul back to the ancient battle where the Sith apprentice could feel the pain and suffering that his Sith brethren had gone through as they were struck down by the Jedi. He felt every strike and slash as if the Jedi were doing it to him. When he could finally break free of the hallucination, the experience had embedded in him, and from that moment on, a pulsating hatred and intense craving for vengeance against the Jedi. Number three. Maul's mother was Sidious's original apprentice. As a member of Darth Bane's Rule of Two, Darth Sidious knew that when the time came to pick his own apprentice, he would have to be certain to choose the right apprentice to aid him in the Sith revenge against the Jedi. So, when in his travels he came across the Knight Sister, Mother Talzin, Sidious befriended the Deathly Witch and promised to take her under his tutelage. But when he sensed the strength of her son's Force connection, the Sith recognized how much potential was in Maul, so he rejected Mother Talzin and took Maul as his apprentice instead. Number 4. The size of Maul's horns grew as he aged. Aside from his iconic tattoos, perhaps the most recognizable part of Darth Maul's outward features are his horns. From pubescence to adulthood into their elder years, Zabrak's horns grew as they aged. Not all Zabraks can actually grow horns though. For those who do, even then there are differences in their growth pattern. While most have their horns grow around their entire head, some Zabrak just grow horns on their foreheads. The horns, just like their tattoos, are a symbol of honor and strength from all species. They are a cultural signifier that a Zabrak has finally become a true warrior. Now, of course, the horns, along with their cultural significance, can also be used to impale enemies with, as seen when Maul's brother, Savage Opress, was on the planet Florum and used his horns to defeat a Jedi apprentice who was traveling with Obi-Wan Kenobi during the Clone Wars. Now, for Maul, when he briefly ruled over the Mandalorian's homeworld, his troops who understood what the horns meant for the Zabrak Sith patterned their armor in a red and black color scheme with horns protruding from their helmets, as a show of honor and respect towards their new ruler. Number 5. Maul's Earring The average fan may or may not have noticed that Darth Maul wears a small pearl-like earring on the upper part of his left ear. It's a nice little touch that adds to his warrior-like overall appearance, but the reason he wears it doesn't lie in lore but in a little mistake on the set of The Phantom Menace. Ray Park, the actor who portrayed Darth Maul in Episode 1 and in Solo, had just been put in his full costume and makeup when he realized that he had forgotten to take off his earring. But rather than having the costume department take off the earring and redo the makeup, George Lucas liked the addition and so they decided to keep it as part of the character's look. It definitely makes Maul look a little more edgy and rebellious. Number 6. 
Darth Maul's tattoos are based on the muscle patterns of his face. Maul is definitely one of the best parts of The Phantom Menace, but regardless of where you fall on that, his character's appearance definitely became an iconic part of the Star Wars lore. He has the least lines of any villain, and yet is one of the most popular. His look underwent numerous different designs during the development stages of the film. The intricate arrangements of his tattoos that Lucas people came up with weren't just random set of markings that looked menacing and cool, but they're actually based on the muscle patterns underneath his skin. This configuration of his tattoos was a clever way to make the Sith assassin look as terrifying and unsettling as possible. Because they were patterned after his muscle, if you were to tear the flesh from his face, the muscle underneath would match the look of the tattoos. Number seven, he founded a group of crime lords called the Shadow Collective. During the Clone Wars, Darth Maul, along with his brother and apprentice Savage Opress, sought out numerous bounty hunters and crime lords, with the goal of forming a group together called the Shadow Collective. It was during this time that the Sith Assassin would first come into conflict with the Mandalorians, who later he would go on to rule, thanks in part to the assistance of his Shadow Collective. The role of Crime Lord came easy to Maul, as his keen intelligence, ruthlessness, murderous instincts, and incredible abilities quickly made him the apex predator in a group of killers, thus the clear leader of the Shadow Collective, and eventually a rival to the Rule of Two Sith Order. Number eight there is a wink to him in The Force Awakens. In Episode 7, when Han Solo and Chewie came across Rey and Finn and are finally reunited with the Millennium Falcon, the scruffy-looking nerf herder and his hairy partner have been flying around in the galaxy in a giant freighter that happens to hold very dangerous creatures called Rathtars. When his freighter is boarded by various factions who have bones to pick with the smuggler, Han releases the Rathtars at them. The result was a terrifying chase through the ship as the beasts killed Han's enemies and nearly Han and the other heroes too. However, Solo isn't the only major Star Wars character to have had a run-in with the Rathtars. As you can probably guess, Maul has had his own unique encounters with the ferocious beasts. As the Sith Apprentice had grown impatient with his training, craving to face a worthy opponent, he decided to travel to the planet Tuan Keti to hunt down their famous predators, the Rathtars. You might remember it in a comic that I've covered. Their brutal and savage nature appeared to Darth Maul, and he respected that unlike him, they served no master. For most, hunting Rathtars was a perilous proposition that was not undertaken lightly. But for Maul, hunting them down was merely to pass the time and his boredom. Number nine, he was a killer with a heart. Two of them. Though the Zabrak species are very similar to humans in their appearance, they do have several key differences. The horns being the obvious ones, but internally, they were also different, in that Maul and the rest of his kind had two hearts beating in their bodies. Like a human heart, the Zabrak's hearts regulated their blood, but also worked as kidneys. So, if one of them stopped working, the other heart would keep pumping blood in its place. This could help give Maul and other Zabraks an advantage, almost a second chance in battle as they kind of had an extra battery to run on. Maul's species were not the only one to have two hearts. Another famous person was Ki Adimundi's kin, the Syrians. Though there has yet, as far as I know, to be any lore story where Maul's second heart comes into play and gives him an unexpected edge in a duel or battle, it's fun to think about how one of the most dangerous and cold-hearted killers in the galaxy is all full of heart. Number 10. Maul and Obi-Wan had their first rematch in the Clone Wars. Maul wanted two things during the Clone Wars. One was to create his own rival power to the Jedi and the Sith. The second, which may have been of even more urgency for the Zabrak, was he wanted vengeance against Kenobi for his defeat on Naboo. His brother Savage had found Maul on a junkyard planet and took the injured Sith back with him to Dathomir, the home of Mother Talzin, who restored his sanity and repaired his legs. Once rehabbed, Maul became obsessed with finding Obi-Wan and enacting his revenge on the Jedi Master. So soon after he managed to hunt down Kenobi and a decade after their epic duel, the two warriors once again faced each other. Maul clearly had the advantage in their duel, but he was unable to get his revenge on Obi-Wan because Count Dooku's former apprentice, Asajj, interceded herself into the battle, siding with her enemy Kenobi against Maul. This wouldn't be the final confrontation between the two, of course, there would be others through the years even after the Clone Wars. Both opponents would cause each other a lot of heartache. Maul was literally half the man he used to be because of Kenobi, and Kenobi would lose the woman he loved to Maul's blade, as well as his master. It wouldn't be until near the Battle of Yavin that the two of them would have their last duel, but Obi-Wan had just been a Padawan who got lucky on Naboo, a Jedi whose powers were still growing into the Clone Wars. But by the time of their final duel, 
He was a wise and powerful Jedi Master, and for the first time, the superior of the two. Obi-Wan only felt sorrow when he slayed Darth Maul, but at last, the Sith, who never had been given a choice about joining the dark side, found some peace in his death. Hope you enjoyed this video about Maul. Let me know if you want another top 10 with Maul's powers or more interesting facts about him, because there are so many. List some of your favorite facts in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you, always.